Hello, I hope you are fine. As of today, I have created videos on indifferent curve, capital allocation line, utility and risk aversion. I hope you have mastered all these concepts by now. If not, please watch my video on that and do a revision. I'm sure you can do it. Today, I'm going to combine the various concepts to form an optimal complete portfolio. In this video, I have created an example based on the current low interest rate environment which the world is facing now. I have also drawn many graphs and tables using Excel to illustrate on the explanation. Therefore, this video has really took me many hours and late nights to produce. However, I hope this will be relevant for your learning. By the way, what is the purpose of learning all this? What is an optimal complete portfolio? How can the portfolio be formed? Why are we interested in optimal complete portfolio? Well, we are going to find out together. Stay tuned. An optimal complete portfolio refers to the entire portfolio. It consists of risky asset and risk-free asset. An optimal complete portfolio maximizes the utility of investors. The portfolio can be found by using indifferent curve and capital allocation line. Besides, we can also use formula to derive the optimal complete portfolio. Here is the formula to compute the optimal complete portfolio. This solution shows the weights or optimal position in risky asset. Take note that the investor's risk aversion, A, is considered in the formula. How is the formula formed? Here are the explanations. We have three formula here, the utility formula, expected return of complete portfolio, and the standard deviation of complete portfolio. The maximization problem is solved by setting the derivative of this expression to zero. Doing so, we can solve for the weights for optimal position in risky asset. Let's take a look at an example. Here we have two types of assets, risk-free asset and risky portfolio P. Earlier in one of my videos, I have shown you how to compute the equation of the capital allocation line. Therefore, I would not repeat here. I have put the equation of the capital allocation line for your reference. Assuming investor has a risk aversion of 4, our objective is to find out how much is the rate to invest in risky portfolio P and risk-free asset in order to form an optimal complete portfolio that maximizes the utility of investors. This graph shows the capital allocation line of the example. The intercept of the capital allocation line represents the risk-free rate of 1%. The slope of the capital allocation line is represented by sharp ratio, which is 0 0.56. In this table, my objective is to calculate the expected return. I use the coefficient of risk aversion of 4 and different level of standard deviation from 0 to 0 0.26, utility of 0 0.03, 0 0.04, 0 0.0492, and 0 0.06 to compute the expected return. To help you see clearly, I have highlighted the standard deviation in green color, utility in yellow color, and expected return in blue color. I use the formula for expected return in the box. This working is meant to derive the indifference curve. To draw the indifference curve, the value for x-axis is standard deviation and the value for y-axis is expected return. That is the reason why I'm doing the calculation. Using the expected return calculated in the previous table, I draw four indifferent curves as shown in this graph. From the graph, take note that the higher the indifferent curve, the higher the utility. 
we can use formula to compute the complete portfolio. Take note of this formula. Use the formula to compute the rate of investment in risky portfolio P. The rate of investment in risk-free asset is 1 minus WP, which is 1 minus 0 0.56, and the answer is 0 0.44. After calculating the rate of investment, the expected return and standard deviation of the complete portfolio can be calculated too, as shown in the working. Please try out on your own to practice the calculation. You can check your final answer from the working shown in the slide. You may also calculate reward to variability ratio, which is the sharp ratio, as well as the utility from the investment. The sharp ratio and utility value is calculated using the expected return and standard deviation of the complete portfolio. Do you notice that the sharp ratio is the same of the original capital allocation line, which is 0 0.56? Do you also notice that the utility value is the same as the utility of the indifferent curve that is tangent to the capital allocation line? which is 0 0.0492. Given the capital allocation line, the complete portfolio maximizes the utility of investor based on the highest attainable indifferent curve. The optimal asset allocation decision can be solved graphically using the indifferent curve and the capital allocation line. Take note of the point where the indifferent curve touches the capital allocation line. This is the point where investor can achieve the highest possible indifferent curve that gives the highest utility. To conclude, the optimal complete portfolio is located at the point where the indifferent curve is tangent to the capital allocation line. The tangency point represents the complete portfolio that maximizes utility. The tangency point occurs at standard deviation of 14% and expected return of 8.84%. Let's analyze the various points on the graph further. Point P1 is not optimal. A given increase in risk is compensated by an increase in expected return that is too small for the investor. Take a look at the blue line. The utility achieved by investor is 0 0.03, which is lower than the utility of the two indifferent curves above it. Now, let's take a look at point P2. Point P2 is not feasible. Given the choice, investor would prefer P2 than P3, since P2 maximizes his utility and offers a higher expected return for the same level of risk. But P2 is not on the capital allocation line, so there is no combination of risk-free asset and risky portfolio that will generate a risk return profile like P2. P3 is the investor's optimal portfolio. It is on the capital allocation line, so it is feasible. It is tangent to the indifferent curve. A given increase in risk is compensated by an increase in expected return that is proportional to what the investor requests. At P3, the investor preference for risk and expected return are reconciled with the opportunities offered on the capital allocation line.
Thank you. I hope you can understand this session. See you and goodbye.